If you want to support Black-owned and operated businesses in the Grand Strand area and beyond, check out the NetworkConnects.com for a complete list of establishments in our local area. Our network connects Black businesses to community for a wide range of services, products, organizations, and resources that are viable in the African-American community. You'll find a wide range of products and services that'll fit your needs, along with information about events and happenings around the local community. Check out the networkconnects.com, connecting black businesses to community. The networkconnects.com. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Network Live. I'm April Garner, the Network Founder, and uh, this is our first broadcast for 2021, and I'm so excited and thankful to God that we are back. And of course, the phone would not ring until it's time to go live. Um, I'm going to take care of that. Uh, but anyway, I, I'm excited as well to um, take care of that all the way. I'm excited as well uh, to have our special guest today, uh, Mr. Lee Belcher of Synovus. He will be here to talk with us about the PPP loan rollout. And uh, this is going to be a, a sort of like an info session so that you can prepare yourselves for uh, the next rollout of business funds that are provided uh, through this PPP program. And of course, Lee was here uh, previously to talk about the first rollout and a few other things that were going on as far as uh, grant funding and other uh, programs that were offered through the state of South Carolina. And so I'm excited to have him back again today. Uh, Dr. McIver, of course, is typically with me to do the COVID-19 updates, but uh, I tell you, it has been a really crazy week for everyone and especially for Dr. McIver. And so uh, he is not able to join us this afternoon. He gave me kind of a late evening call and said, you know, we can definitely uh, reconvene next week. And so, you know, the doc needs a break. I told him that everything that's happening right now, as far as what was going on with him, it just means he needs to slow down just a little bit, catch his breath, kind of gather himself. Uh, and so that uh, he can, you know, get ready for 2021 and roll into it in a, in a healthy and powerful way. And so we'll have him back next week. He's perfectly all right. It's just that, you know, uh, there's some things that he need to take care of this afternoon. So, uh, you know, the COVID situation is what it is in terms of uh, the fact that we are still in a pandemic. And I know that everyone feels the um, the weight of that because moving into 2021, the hope was that we would see somewhat of a change or some relief or, you know, we would be rounding the curve and we'll be able to uh, see our way clear. You know, there's a lot of talk and just apprehension and fears about the vaccine rollout. Uh, you know, there's so much going on surrounding the pandemic. And, you know, all that we can continue to do is press upon uh, our viewers and uh, anyone who is impacted by this pandemic, which is everyone, of course, in the world. But anyone who's you know listening, particularly to us, uh, is that you know we have to continue to remain cautious. We can't let our guard down with this particular uh, virus because uh, you know the things that we see in the research shows us that the numbers are continuing to climb. Uh, you know people are continuing to get sick. Their the deaths are are definitely happening every single day. Uh, you know every second, as a matter of fact. And so it isn't something that we can take lightly, especially now that we are deep into cold and flu season. Uh, you know, we, uh, we've we kind of positioned ourselves to provide information and just to encourage people to do their best to make sure that they're taken care of and their loved ones are taken care of. And that's what we're going to continue to do uh, through our COVID-19 updates in 2021. And as often as possible, uh, you know, our hope and prayer is that we will be able to continue this every Friday at four, uh, you know, we'll take a look at 
whether or not we need to shift the date and time or whatever, uh, depending on uh, you know everything that occurs in the coming weeks. But I can assure you that the information that we will provide every single week is it will always be uh, you know based on the research, based on the facts, based on the science. And if Dr. McIver is willing to put his reputation on the line to come on air on the internet every single week to uh, educate everyone about what is happening with COVID-19 and just to stress upon uh, our viewers why it's important for us to continue to be vigilant about this, then I think that it, it says a lot that, uh, you know, he has a, a practice that depends on him uh, and, uh, you know, that goes along with his lifestyle. And when it comes down to uh, co-signing certain things, uh, you know, we all have to be very careful about what we co-sign nowadays. Uh, and so, you know, Dr. McIver co-signs the science. He co-signs the facts. He does his research and uh, he's, he doesn't know everything. But what he does know, he brings to you every single week uh, in the form of updates on COVID-19, what we need to know and just, you know, uh, information that will help us to understand why it's so important for us to remain cautious during this pandemic. So uh, I just wanted to let you know a little bit about what's gonna uh, happen in 2021. We'll continue the COVID-19 updates. Uh, I'm also going to continue with our uh, business spotlights uh, and, you know, Lee uh, is gonna bring us some information today. So he's, you know, also uh, in, I guess, in the spirit of the business spotlight, uh, helping us out with that today. But uh, I will continue to reach out to the network base and bring on, uh, local entrepreneurs and black business owners so that they can tell you more about their products and services uh, and, you know, not just what they're selling, but what they're doing in the community in terms of community service and other offerings that uh, they are putting their heart and soul into to make sure that we all have resources uh, for our community. And, you know, this show is broadcast to the public every single week. And, you know, I want to make this statement, too that yes, you know, uh, the heart of the network is black business ownership. Uh, it's also the black community, but the information that we disseminate every single week is for everyone. So if you authentically and genuinely want to support black businesses, if you want to just, you know, uh, join us every week to get this information, uh, we certainly welcome everyone. And uh, we appreciate the diversity of our audience. We appreciate everyone who, uh, you know, stuck it out with us for the past nine or 10 months. And uh, we certainly hope to continue to have you with us through 2021. Uh, we've got some great things coming up this month. Of course, as you know, uh, January 18th is MLK Day. And so there's going to be uh, some MLK celebrations going on in the local area. Uh, uh, as you know, the Carolina African American Heritage uh, Foundation has their annual event and they have a very extensive calendar that includes, I believe some virtual events, but also uh, maybe some in-person events, including their traditional uh, breakfast. And so if you want more information about uh, the events uh, of, for, from that foundation, uh, definitely look up their website and their Facebook page so that you can get more information about all of the events they have uh, lined up. I mean, uh, you know, they're not only giving out community service awards, but they are also uh, uh, hosting and producing workshops for uh, business and economics and they're just trying to educate people as much as possible. And so I think it's wonderful that, uh, you know, these uh, programs are continuing. Uh, even in the midst of COVID, you know, we have to figure out how to make it business as usual somehow. And, you know, the virtual platforms have, have definitely given us that a uh, way to do it. Uh, also, the Conway Ori County MLK Planning Committee, for which I'm a member, uh, we will be hosting our MLK events on January the 16th and January the 18th. So January the 16th is actually a Zoom uh, event, and that is a registration-only event for our youth. Uh, we have a wonderful speaker lined up for that particular day. Her name is Sasha Ariel. Austin, and uh, she's an author. She's a Pace University graduate. Uh, she's a tech guru. Uh, she's going to talk to our students uh, about, uh, you know, uh, looking to the future in terms of, of tech careers and also, uh, you know, the importance of learning how to code, which is something that we all probably need to learn. But, you know, our young people really have a, a great wealth of resources and tools available to them to learn how to do some phenomenal things in the world of technology. So she's going to talk to them. And then we also are hosting a youth uh, video competition. So we're, you know, keeping it all technology based. 
And uh, the youth will have an opportunity to develop uh, 60 to 90 second videos where they will discuss their thoughts on certain topics that are related to the work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And uh, along with that competition comes some great prizes. And uh, so I'm not gonna go into all the details because I really want you to check it out on wcmagazine.net. If you will go to that website, you will find all of the information about the 41st annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration hosted by the Conway Ori County MLK Planning Committee. That's wcmagazine.net. You will also find the registration form for the youth event. So the youth must register to be a part of it. Uh, we're looking for elementary, middle and high school students, uh, grand prizes for the competition, first place $100, second place $50, and third place $25 in each of those school grade categories. So uh, if you have a young person who's interested, just go to that website, you'll see all of the information about the contest, you'll see the contest rules, uh, the directions for how to put the videos together. And it's just a 60 second to 90 second video that they can actually produce on their phones and send in to us. And we just want them to be creative and have fun with it, but also uh, you know, uh, make sure that, that they are communicating to us their thoughts and feelings in the spirit of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on a number of social issues that are still impacting us today. On Monday, January 18th, uh, we are set to have a wonderful speaker to do our keynote address, and her name is Wendy Brawley. She is a South Carolina State Representative for District 70. She represents Richland and Sumter Counties. And let me tell you, uh, Wendy Brawley is one of those persons that I put in that you know, black girl magic category because she is doing some phenomenal things in Richland County. You know, she is a trailblazer. She's a very loud and powerful voice. She's impactful. Uh, not only is she one of our state representatives, but she is also uh, the founder and CEO of Amara Woman magazine. And also the they have a show, a talk show. And so uh, Wendy Brawley will be with us on Monday for our keynote address. Uh, we have some uh, a special presentation, MLK video presentation that's uh, being created by none other than Brother Edward McQueen, our uh, publisher of the Whittemore Community Magazine. And I like to call him our community resident photographer because, you know, he puts together that magazine and he's like all over Horry County. Uh, he'll even go to Georgetown County if you guys will reach out to him. And he, he takes pictures and talks to people and, you know, creates content for this homegrown magazine that everyone loves because it's news for us and by us. OK, and so uh, he's putting together a, a little montage of uh, uh, photos and videos from previous MLK events. And so that's going to be great to see as far as what's happened in the past. Uh, we will also announce the winners of the youth video competition on Monday as well. Now, the Monday event is going to be a live stream here on Facebook and also on YouTube. And so it's open to the public. It's for everyone. And I don't, I know you don't want to miss the message that uh, State Representative Brawley is going to bring to the table. Our theme is Be the Dream. And so you can imagine what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, was trying to instill in us and still is trying to instill in us. You, you, a lot of you are knowledgeable of it. You've heard the speeches. Uh, you've seen the videos. You've seen the documentaries. And so we want to make sure that everyone continues to uh, uphold the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. of unity and love uh, across our country, in our in our nation, and in our world. So, uh, you know, those are just a couple of things that are happening uh, coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks. And any questions or any comments for our special guest once I bring him into the stream, uh, please do not feel shy about asking questions. Uh, you know, and we're talking about the PPP rollout today, but I'm sure, you know, you never know where our conversation may go. We might uh, delve into some other topics that are banking related or finance related, but I have just the person who can help me with all of that because I'm still learning myself and, um, it, you know, knowledge is power. So I can't wait to hear what our special guest has to say. So uh, Lee Belcher, how are you today? I think you're muted. All right, 2021, starting off with the bags. <laughs> Thank you for having me on today. Excited to be on with you guys. Exactly, you're right. Excited to be on with you. Exactly, excited to be on. I know. Uh, and uh, you're right, 2021 has started off with a bang, but we're not going to go there today. Uh, you know, but what we want people to understand is that 
Uh, you know, there's so much that is happening in the world and yet we still have to continue business as usual. And, you know, that's always been a challenge here, uh, considering COVID, you know, has been with us basically since late March or early April. And I know that a, a lot of business owners are still trying to figure out, uh, you know, what they're going to do to keep their doors open, to keep their employees uh, you know, on on their payrolls to make sure they have the, biz, the the products and services that they need in their inventories. And I'm sure it can be pretty frustrating, especially at this point, because a lot of people were hoping that we would be out of this thing by now, but we're not. And, you know, the one thing about it is that uh, funding has been available from a number of different sources. And like I said before, you were here a few months ago when uh, there was a release of some uh, grant funds uh, for everyone. And uh, you were here with a representative from uh, an agency in South Carolina talking about that. And uh, now, you know, we're back to, I guess, round two of, of PPP. And so uh, if you will remind everyone what PPP stands for, what it's all about, and then we can get into the discussion about how they can prepare for it. Okay, absolutely. So uh, PPP actually stands for the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, and this was initiated in early March, April, when the pandemic initially uh, started and we saw a rapid decline and loss of jobs. Uh, so Congress uh, and the government was able to step in at that time period and try to supplement business owners uh, to help them continue to keep people uh, employed and not have to go through the layoff portion. Uh, so the first round of PPP was implemented and in early, I want to say April, early April is when the application process uh, came through and allowed businesses to then apply for funds based on their uh, 2019 payroll and mm -hmm. able to get two and a half times, uh, two and a half months worth of their payroll to be able to then keep their employees in and supplement them during that time period where they may have laid them off. It was a tremendous help and it actually helped keep people employed uh, until some of businesses, some businesses were able to stabilize and we started to see a little bit more traction toward the end of the summertime and beginning of October. Um, what we found out though is that not all businesses were able to stabilize and, and start to get traction. We had certain industries that were hit hardest uh, and that's uh, hospitality, a lot mm -hmm. of your industries, your your tourism industries that include hotels, they they took a little bit more of uh, a hit than other industries were able to do and weren't able to recover as fast. Yeah, uh, I heard a, I heard an article or actually heard a report on um, it may have been CNN or MSNBC. The number that they put out there was pretty staggering. They said there were like 11 million jobs in that sector that were lost due to COVID. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, it's significant. So mm -hmm. while, while manufacturing and some of these other industries were able to come back a little bit stronger, uh, you had some of the industries and, and a lot of these smaller businesses, uh, mm -hmm. not your your corporations or your corporate uh, chains that are in certain areas. A lot of your small businesses, uh, a lot of your rural areas did not have the recovery just yet. And so we're mm -hmm. hoping that um, the pandemic is going to we're going to come out on the back end of that. And then some of those uh, either small businesses or businesses in those rural areas can can start to see the economic uh, impact start to change for them. But uh, for now, they have decided that they're going to roll out that uh, second form of the PPP program. Uh, mm. So that's what Definitely wanted to uh, let everybody know. And, and this one is a little bit different and some things have changed in this one that are, are going to be geared more to small businesses. Uh, so it, it's there. They have changed the focus a little bit and we they really want to come in and help small businesses with this round. Mm -hmm. So, Lee, I don't know if you have the statistic or not, but how many small businesses were able to take advantage of the PPP program? Uh, I know that the, in the beginning, uh, you know, there was some talk about uh, the difficulty with securing the funds and the availability of the funds. But, uh, you know, when you all, I guess, kind of analyze the data, does it look as if small businesses benefited highly or greatly from it? And if they didn't, um, you know, will we be able to talk about some of the reasons why? 
So I, I don't have the specific number on how many were able to take the uh, PPP program, but there there was um, a gap between I think the the portion that they implemented initially mm -hmm. uh, because you did have some larger corporations that were able to take some of those funds. Uh, you had some that were able that decided they wanted to give those funds back uh, after they initially took them, um, but. I don't have the specific numbers on how many we're able to take. And I know that uh, through our financial institution, we were able to help 22,000 small businesses uh, with the PPP funds. And now it, when it comes and when I say small business, uh, I mean, everybody who applied for the PPP program, which means you had your small business um, employees that uh, took the small business owners that took the PPP program. You mm -hmm. also had associates that were, uh, 1099 are independent contractors. Uh, mm. so they were able to come in uh, for the for the staggered and second uh, phase of the PPP program initially, and they were able to receive that funding. So all in all, through our bank, it was uh, around 22,000 that were able to take advantage of it. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the statistics that our bank likes to uh, likes to uh, share is that. With our small business uh, PPP program, we were able to help a significant amount of small businesses. Uh, we didn't have uh, as many of your large cap size uh, corporations that uh, took the PPP fund. So our PPP, uh, I think about over 70 percent of our PPP loans were uh, in that three hundred thousand dollars or less range, uh, okay, which okay. significantly tells you that it was a small business when it when you look at your average payroll throughout the year and then being able to get two and a half months worth of your payroll to get back to your uh, in your PPP program. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the businesses that are able to take advantage of this program in terms of what they consider to be an employee, do they have to have a roster of employees or can the owners consider themselves employees and still be able to take advantage of the program? So there, there was a lot of confusion about this in mm -hmm. April. Uh, so first guidance came out and what was considered an employee was somebody who you gave a W-2 out to and you paid taxes for that employee. Um, later guidance came after we started going through the PPP program that uh, owners of the business who then took guaranteed payments uh, who were on salary themselves, which they were included in there. But if they took guaranteed payments or if they took uh, a K-1 distribution from their employer, then they were able to go in with the contractors uh, that following week. It was a week uh, stagger between application processes. So first week was uh, just businesses who had W-2 employees. Mm -hmm. You filed that. Uh, you got the money to keep those people employed. Then the second week after that, it was the round that allowed the uh, contractors who were 1099 associates. But then they came back and made a change and said that if if you took guaranteed payments, uh, payments to officers, uh, which is consider your owner of the business and you're allowed to take a guaranteed payment. Or if you took that distribution during that round, you could then also apply to receive PPP funds for yourself. OK. All right. And, and so that was. That was difficult for uh, a lot of business owners that they were taking the PPP program and they were keeping their uh, employees employed, keeping their lights on. But then at the same time, they weren't able initially to take those funds to take care of their household. Um, okay. they paid themselves, depending on how they paid themselves, it it and it kept them out of that first round. So then they mm. didn't change allow them to get those payments. Okay. So uh, I guess it's safe to say that uh, from then to now, from April to now, we've learned a lot yes. about, <laughs> about how, uh, you know, I guess the impact of, of the PPP program. Uh, obviously there were some uh, good inroads because we're having a second rollout. So I know one of the main things we wanted to do with this particular uh, broadcast was to remind people of what they need to do to get ready for the rollout. And so, uh, you know, what are some things that people need to go ahead and start doing, I guess, doing now? Uh, when And when does the window open for them to apply? 
Okay. So now, and I really wanted to come on and kind of just give the guidance because we don't have the window for when this is going to happen, but okay. it's critical for business owners to be prepared for when this window opens. Uh, we, we, we took a lesson from the first PPP rollout that it was first come first serve. If you had your paperwork in order, you had your finances and the information that was required, you went into the queue first and then you were able to go through the SBA process and receive the PPP funds. So I, I think it's critical to, to let people know what is what we know right now, which is not everything. Uh, so I'll put that disclaimer out. We don't know mm -hmm. what the what everything that's going to be required. We know some. Uh, and the most important thing that I can tell business owners right now is to make sure that you have your finances in order. Um, one thing that we do know is that this next round is going to be a little different. Um, what they are looking for is it's condensed and it's really geared around the smaller businesses. So they are mm. eliminating some businesses that, that didn't see a significant drop off. Uh, one of the main criteria for this next round of PPP is going to be uh, you have to demonstrate that you had a 25 percent reduction in revenue uh, from quarter one, two or three in 2020 when compared to 2019. So mm. that means for some businesses that that did not break out their quarter to quarter, in 2019, you have some work to do because you want to go ahead and make sure that you go back and find a way, either speak with your accountant or look at your books, uh, pull up QuickBooks or whatever that. And you're going to want to make sure that you can break out that quarter to quarter to see if you have that 25 percent reduction in revenue. If you don't have that reduction, then that is a qualifier that's going to eliminate you from receiving the second round of PPP. Mm. Um, it is something that's good. It is really going to pinpoint and drive home that we are helping businesses that are, or they want to help businesses that are really been impacted. Uh, so if it has, if you haven't had that impact of that reduction, then it will, it will take you out. Uh, the next is they have put a cap on the number of employees that you can have, which is 300. And most of your small businesses mm -hmm. are gonna have 100 from that 100. So they've reduced that down to number of employees that you can have at that business and still apply for that PPP program. Um, so those are just some of the small things that you're gonna wanna do uh, to make sure that you have that information ready and prepared. Um, mm -hmm. You're also going to want to know that it's still going to, once you receive those funds, you're still going to have to put a minimum. It's going to be a 60 40 split again. 60% uh, has to go to payroll and payroll expenses, which could include insurance. And then the other 40% can go to other qualified expenses that you have. But it, it's going to be important that you, you know that going forward. Um, mm -hmm. Another uh, change that's going to come in this this group and this round of PPP is uh, it was two times the average monthly payroll uh, cost for the prior year that you were able to receive. And that's going to stay the same. But then there's going to be an addition where if you are in a hospitality or entertainment industry, you're going to be able to get three and a half times uh, that. So that's going to mm. be for your restaurants, your hotels, uh, any of those service industries that were hit the hardest will be able to get a little bit more to help them going forward with this PPP process. Um, then what I said before in this one, everything's the same on who can apply. You have your, your businesses, your independent contractors, all of that, but we're still going to wait on that guidance to kind of tell us who's going to go first and, and how that process is going to work for the banks. Um, but another, and probably I would say the, the next and probably the last most important thing that you're going to want to take a look at is before this process opens up is you're going to want to know uh, who is doing and completing the PPP loan programs. Um, mm -hmm. So every financial institution, every uh, company that has access and you have some other ones like Square and PayPal that were able to uh, get in and help with the PPP program, they have an option and not everybody who accepted the PPP program in April and May 
are going to participate in this PPP uh, second round. Uh, so the what you need to do now is if you if you have your financial institution that you work with, you want to contact them and you want to say, are you guys going to participate in this next round or this second round of PPP program? And if they are not, then you may need to start looking at other avenues to help you uh, get into this round to get that PPP program. Mm, OK, uh, well, you know, this is a, a lot of great information and we do have a, a question from one of our viewers. Thank you so much, Keith Skinner, for joining us today. His question is, what's the reimbursement limit and for the second round? The reimbursement limit or the, are we asking for the cap, uh, the, the amount that you can take? Uh, Keith, if you will um, just kind of, I guess, make a comment on whether or not that's what you mean. Uh, it sounds like that that may be what he's talking about. Yeah, so I, I think mm -hmm. the cap on this round is going to be two million dollars on the PPP uh, loan. Mm -hmm. So that that will be the max that you can uh, get as a business owner for this round. Um, it, and I think it's it's not much of a change from the first round, uh, mm -hmm. but that that it has been lowered down to two million dollars. OK. All right. You know, I've, I've been curious as to what uh, new business owners are doing to survive COVID, because, you know, based on what you described, it doesn't sound like the brand new business owner is going to be able to take advantage of this program. Uh, and, I, you know, I don't know what programs are out there to help them. But, yeah, if you you know, had just turned the key to your door and started your your business venture and then COVID hit, I'm sure that right now there are a lot of people who are scratching their heads about whether or not they can continue or what they should do as far as, you know, um, I guess moving forward with their plan. So uh, PPE does not help the brand new business owner. Is that correct? So it so there is a cutoff date from when you open your business in 2020. Uh, for you to be able to be eligible for the PPP program. And that cutoff date is February, February 15th, 2020 is mm -hmm. the date that you're cut off. If you opened up before February uh, 20, February 15th, 2020, you are still eligible to apply for the PPP program. Um, there's different criteria and I'm going to wait and kind of see what the guidance is mm -hmm. on that. What it was before is they would take your average payroll from when you open your doors until that time period and get an average for you, uh, put it into a calculator and they would uh, compute what you would get on your paycheck, um, your PPP loan. Mm -hmm. uh, for this next round, we're we're waiting on that guidance to see what is going to be determined for that new business owner. And if that same date is going to be set, which I'd imagine, I think they are going to leave the date the same. OK. All right. Or, for new businesses coming in, if you opened up after February 15th, um, I think what their mindset is, is that you opened up after the pandemic. So mm -hmm. you you kind of had that in your planning uh, for your business and kind of understood that, hey, this is what's going on. You may not have brought in a tremendous amount of employees. You might have staggered and, and stalled your employee hires. Uh, to get there. Now, one of the good things about that is there are going to be some tax breaks for uh, businesses coming in 2021. Uh, for every employee that you hire, you're going to get a tax credit. Uh, and excuse me, not for every employee that you hire. So for every employee uh, above where you started in 2021, gotcha. you will be able gotcha. to get a tax credit uh, on your taxes in 2021. And what they have done is they have computed uh, by county and they have listed each county in different tier sections. Uh, so tier one, two, three, and four, uh, I believe Horry County is in tier three uh, and it's based on the income in that county. And what it does is because you're tier three, you get a higher tax credit per increase in hires that you have. Um, so that would be something for newer businesses to maybe have an opportunity to take advantage of, uh, but you will want to get with your tax accountant uh, at the end of 21 to kind of get those details or, or speak with them now and kind of get an understanding of what you need to uh, keep track of and what you need to understand about that process so you can fully take advantage of it at the end of 2021. 
Okay. All right. Uh, Keith added a little bit more to uh, his comment. Uh, the payback limit, if there is one, the first round was below 50000 Your PPP was waived. Does that add clarity okay. to what he's probably okay. asking? So now there, there's still, and I think you may be asking about the process to get it forgiven. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The forgiveness the, limit the, is the, the correct language. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, so your forgiveness limits right now, as they stand, they're going to be uh, with and they did a simplified process. So you have one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, I think, is really what you're going to consider your forgiveness limit that you're not going to have to do anything for to get that forgiven. Yeah, they did a they changed that with the approval of this second round of PPP. So we were accepting forgiveness applications and then we halted anybody who took less than 150,000. There's going to be a simplified one page form. And then you're really attesting to the fact that you use the funds the way you said you used them and you're signing that and getting it back in. So that is what the change is coming on that one. And it, it's going to be set at $150,000 or less. Okay. Uh, right. Everything else you're going to have to uh, provide documentation, show proof of anything over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars that you received on the PPP forgiveness. Mm, gotcha. Okay. All right. So uh, part of our pre-show conversation was uh, all about not only just the preparedness, but what's missing uh, in the equation a lot of times. And we were talking about bookkeeping. And how it is kind of difficult to find great bookkeepers and that, you know, some businesses do not have, uh, you know, a great bookkeeping system. So uh, kind of explain why it's so important to have someone who can uh, kind of filter through this language and decipher the codes and all that so that whoever decides to, you know, uh, take advantage of the program has all of their ducks in a row and they're doing everything legally and uh, in the uh, way that it's been outlined for the program. All right. So I lost you for a second there. Yeah, you did. You believe that. <laughs> okay. So bookkeeping, the importance of bookkeeping and having a bookkeeper who can decipher the codes, the language, uh, who can, who can pretty much break it down into layman's terms so that the average small business owner will understand all the mumbo jumbo and the lingo that goes along with everything. Why is it important for people to make sure they have solid bookkeeping? So solid bookkeeping is is everything. And it's not just specifically for uh, this PPP program. It's also for banking purposes. It's also for uh, running your business efficiently and kind of having a way to go back and understand uh, what are you missing or what are some of the things that you can help your business run more efficiently and effectively. Um, so it is critical that you have uh, a good bookkeeping and good records. Um, it helps you when you're dealing with your inventory. It helps you understanding your real true cost for everything that you're doing in your business and whether you can cut and save and, and mm -hmm. still provide the same level of service. Uh, so it's critical to really have a bookkeeper that understands that and somebody that can sit down with you and help you uh, in that process. Um, there are a lot of different avenues that are out there, even uh you can hire somebody that can audit, which is super expensive to have an mm -hmm. auditor and get audited financials all the way down to as simple as for a small business, having a, a program in place like QuickBooks or, or just mm -hmm. having somebody in break everything down for you and help you in that process. And what the pandemic has taught us is that this how important it is when it comes to doing business with the government mm -hmm. uh, and. And when you do need something or they have something available, what they're going to want to do is they're going to want to know what your financials are. They're going to want to ask you those questions that if you don't have those good records, you're going to find yourself eliminated from being able to do things with the government. You're going to be find yourself eliminated from being able to apply for the PPP loans because you don't have what's required to get you through that process. Um, so it, there are a lot of uh, different avenues. And I, I mentioned the Small Business Development Center all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned before, uh, there are also some other uh, companies out of not not necessarily in Horry County, but in Columbia who can, uh, help. Uh, have their records and bookkeeping together. And I, I would love to. Uh, kind of share some as we go forward and hopefully this year, maybe even get 
uh, some of those folks on the show to to give more details. I think that would be extremely helpful uh, for, you know, especially our business owners who tune into the show or even are part of the network and, and other uh, affiliations that we have, uh, you know, across the, the Internet and wherever. But, um, you know, I, I think that that was always the conversation, uh, the challenges and barriers that existed. And, you know, for the especially the small minority business, you know, uh, and I don't know if you have any stats on how many minority businesses were actually uh, in place to take advantage of, of the PPP or any other program that was out there. But for some reason, you know, minority businesses tend to be on that that downward slope or they tend to be uh, not in a position to take advantage. And I think it's uh, maybe it's just a miseducation or just a, a lack of, of knowledge of what's actually out there. You know, some people are just doing their homegrown thing trying to make their uh, business visions come true, but you got to do business the right way. And you got to make sure that you have everything in order, uh, you know, finding you a, a great bookkeeper, like you said, you know, becoming uh, versed in how to use QuickBooks. And I mean, there, there are courses out there that you can take on that type of thing, uh, you know, tapping into even uh, some of the local colleges who may have new graduates that are coming out of accounting programs. You know, there, there are tons of ways to be creative as far as getting someone on your payroll, or at least, you know, from a consulting standpoint, to help you pull your paperwork together. Uh, and it, it would be a shame that, you know, if there are businesses or business owners out there who can't take advantage of it simply because uh, they don't have maybe it's one article or one item or something that they are just totally missing uh, from the equation. So, you know, we want to encourage everyone to just make sure that uh, you take this information and then start to create your checklist for what you need to do once that rollout period opens up or that enrollment period opens up. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, Lee, are you available to answer any questions or, you know, is there any way any place that you can direct them to, to go or to call if they have any any questions? Yeah. And, and so you can you can definitely reach out to me um, in the I'm local in the area. So I am um, downtown at Sonovas Bank uh, at uh, 2401 North Ocean, North Oak Boulevard. Uh, and that Sonovas Bank is right there near the convention center right there at uh, the corner of 21st and Oak Street. Mm -hmm. um, there are other resources that are provided uh, and, and I've said them before with Small Business Development Center score, but there are also some other other resources available out there. Part of this PPP program also has uh, 25 uh, and I want to say 25 billion dollars are set aside through the Minority Business Development Agency. Um, and that Minority Business Development Agency is geared to just help small minority owned businesses through different contracts. They also help with grants. Uh, and those programs are are available for us out there. I think the key thing for the community is understand what are your resources and how do you continually uh, build that network of folks that can connect you to places that you need to connect to to be successful. So um, mm -hmm. I would love to help if I can help in any way. And if I can't help, I'm always willing to uh, provide any resource that I have and connect you to any resource that I know that can help you. OK, so I tried to uh, put up a, a quick banner for you. So Bank 2401 North Oak Boulevard, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And I can also right. provide my telephone number if they if they want to have that as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, do that. Mm -hmm. My office number is 843-626-1806. I, I went through the whole office and found the easiest telephone number on the phone that I was grabbing. I grabbed that phone. <laughs> you said 843-626-1806. That's correct. I said All that right. rhymes. That's easy I'm enough to get out. So that's my new phone. <laughs> All right. So, Lee, uh, I, I know that we were trying to focus mainly on uh, the, the PPP program, but, uh, you know, what are maybe the top three things uh, as far as advice that you would give people if they want to start a business in 2021? What do they need to think about moving forward, especially when it comes down to trying to figure out uh, how they're going to fund their project? Okay. Uh, for, for starting a business, I think the key thing for everyone is network, network, and network. Um, that That's your first thing is, is to find different resources and avenues to network your business, uh, to grow your business. Uh, social media platforms are good. 
the connections that you have with folks are, are very important and continue to build those and grow those. The, the second thing that I would tell people uh, that is important when doing your open up your business is making sure you you do it the right way. Make sure you if you're planning on selling something or you have something or a storefront is to make sure you you incorporate yourself or get your LLC paperwork together, your tax ID paperwork. Make sure you start that process there. But then also while you're doing that, make sure that you are focused on understanding what your long term plan is for your business. And if your long term plan requires you to need financing and growth then take the small steps in the beginning to make sure that you're focused on your credit, you're focused on your business credit. Uh, and different ways that you can do that is by getting small lines that are available out there. A lot of ways that I tell people to start is with a small business credit card, not necessarily for you to use, mm -hmm. but to establish that business credit. Uh, and then also making sure that you you keep good records of everything and stay detailed uh, with everything that you do, because that is the the most critical thing when it comes to financing or, or getting financing at a bank or a financial institution is, all right, what is your plan and, and how detailed can you get with your numbers and tell and talk to us about your costs and formulating your business plan so that we know that we we are entrusting the fact that we're lending money to somebody who uh, understands their business and cares enough to know the details, cares enough to know what the competition is and how they differ themselves, uh, differentiate it differentiate themselves from the competition. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of those things are critical is it's really just making sure you spend the time to uh, understand what you're doing, how you're doing and laying out that plan. That is a five year plan. Um, when I tell people this, starting out with a new business is very difficult to get uh, financing mm -hmm. from the bank and traditional funding. So there are different avenues that you can get your startup money. Um, a lot of times, if you're looking to start up uh, a franchise or you're looking to buy existing business, it is easier to get financing from the bank when you're starting up first. Uh, otherwise, you may have to look at some of those non-traditional uh, starts for that business uh, or look at different. There are some grant funding options out there. And there are also a lot of people will take a look at uh, some angel investing. Uh, mm -hmm. which have those that you can go uh, and present your ideas and they'll have angel investors that that come in and they will help with your business. Now, they're not free and they they typically want a, a small little piece in return. I was thinking when you said like, angel, I thought Shark Tank. <laughs> so actually, it is pretty much it's, like, it's a, pretty much like a, Shark Tank. Shark tank uh, uh -huh. that you go yeah. into and they and they will mm -hmm. they will take a look at your pitch and then they will decide who wants to contribute finance into your project. Mm -hmm. um, but like I tell people, that's the best advice. Um, uh, grants are, are tougher to find because you find that more of your grants are geared around established businesses. Um, mm -hmm. So like I mentioned before, you have the uh, Minority Business Development Agency and they will help you find grants. But a lot of times their grants are for established businesses, because what they like to do when they're giving out that grant money, uh, typically they like to know that you have some skin in the game. You yes. built the business and it's successful, but you need help getting it to that next level. Mm -hmm. um, so They feel like the grant money and the funds that they give you are not as risky because you've already started and established that business and reached it to a point where it, it, you always get to a point in your business to where it, it gets to that level where you can't go any further until you have some more capital, mm -hmm. but you reach that, that plateau and you need to go to that next level. So they're more inclined to give that. But then also a lot of your grant funding, uh, you find that it is it has specific purposes tied to it, uh, like research or technology where you have to if you if you do get that grant, it can only be used for the advancement of technology, computers, mm -hmm. servers, those type of things there. And they're not really geared for operational expenses that that most businesses need the most help with when they're starting out. Exactly. exactly. And I'm, so, I'm glad to touch upon that because you hear the feedback. Did you hear that? No, I didn't hear it. Oh, it might be in my ear. Uh, 
I'm glad that you you touched on that because I get that question all the time. And uh, you know, folks inbox me or they will you know hit me up through the the network site. Uh, you know, April, how can I find grant money for my business? And uh, you and I kind of talked about that a little bit as well. That you know, a lot of times uh, people they you know sometimes people will attach to a certain idea or a concept and they think that okay, I hear grant, I don't have to pay it back. It should be easy to get. But that is so not the case. It's, and uh, the work that I've done uh, primarily with nonprofits, even for nonprofits that are established and have a, a specific cause or a goal, it's still a hard process. It's a competitive process yeah. because, you know, you can go through foundations and just like you said, these angel networks and things of that nature. But, you know, they even get into the tradition of giving to certain projects that that they believe in. And so they, you know, they might do that perpetual giving where you know, this is who we're giving to every single year. You know, it doesn't matter uh, until they realize, like you said, that, uh, it, well, maybe the cause has has met its goal or it's time to, you know, um, you know, do something philanthropic for somebody else. So grants aren't easy to find and um, you got to do a lot to pretty much prove yourself, which is, I think what you were saying, you know, the establishment of a business is, is more than just, turning the key and opening the door, you have to get in there and really uh, work it and build it up and create data behind your business as well. You know, I, for example, I'm, I'm currently working with uh, uh, someone with a nonprofit um, from the standpoint of kind of guidance and, and helping her through some things. And one of the things that she learned early on was that, you know, yeah, she could go to the Bank of America's of, of the world or the Walmarts or wherever and, and uh, you know, ask for uh, grant money or for some donations or contributions. But it always came down to the data. You know, they want to know what are you doing? Who are you serving? How is this making an impact? You know, things of that nature. So uh, same thing in business. I imagine that, you know, if you go to a, a bank and you're trying to get a loan, uh, to do whatever to your business to make it grow or whatever you're trying to do. Uh, you know, if I were a banker, I'd want to know, well, you know, show me, show me some measures of success. Show me what you're doing to actually, you know, flip this and, and make it work because it is a liability if I'm coming to you to get money and you, you're not in the handing out money business for just any reason. You know, you got to know that there's going to be not only a return on investment, but uh, in a sense, but uh, also that uh, if they're borrowing money from you, yes, you're gonna they're gonna be able to pay it back at some point. So yeah. So we we heavily look at trends. Uh, so I tell people all the time, your your three and five year trends of your business are so important when you're coming to a bank and you're looking for funding because even if you have a business that's been around for 10, 15 years, uh, you could come to us today, but your trends over the last five are heading downward. Mm -hmm. That's going to be something that's going to cause us to say, oh, wait up one second. Let's let's kind of figure out. And you would have to tell us what's going on. So why is there a downward trend in this? And if if you have an explanation that is plausible for the downward trend, there still may be some reason that we say, OK. Uh, and I'll give an example. We had a client who owns a scrap metal yard. Uh, and one of the things that was happening with him is he doesn't have a, a big enough piece of equipment to shred everything down the way he needs to go directly to the mill. Mm. He would have to then take stuff in and he would then have to send it to another, uh, basically a competitor because they have a larger, uh, a larger shredder. They mm. would shred it and then send it to the mill. So he was missing money in that cut. And that was the reason why as he's still growing, he's losing more money because he's the his channel uh, that he's having to send his funds through. So by allowing him to purchase a larger piece of equipment, he's cutting out his middleman and going directly to the mill. And we can we can sit there and analyze that and say, if we cut this person out, it saves him two point three million dollars this year that goes into his pocket instead of routing out of his pocket. Uh, and yeah. that makes sense to do. It. So it, it, it's just understanding and knowing your business, knowing your industry and, and what is going to help you continue to grow. Yeah. And I, and I think it's important. You know, we talked about uh, business owners uh, making sure that they have great bookkeepers on board. But sometimes you, you have to kind of uh, stop midstream and get someone to analyze your business and yeah. even to look at, you know, take a SWOT analysis even or something. And just to figure out what you can do to, to capitalize on what's out there to, to gain more revenue, just like you just said. And, um, 
you know, if, if you haven't figured out already, I come from a business background. <laughs> uh, so, I, you know, I totally get what you're saying. And, uh, you know, one of the other components of it that I'm going to touch on in just a moment that people uh, tend to not really understand is is highly important in business development is the marketing and promotion side. That's yeah. that's a part that small businesses struggle with because they don't always have large marketing budgets to uh, you know, make it happen, you know, even for small advertisements. And so that's important too. I want to touch on that for just a second before we wrap up, but I do have a comment I want to show. Uh, Larry White says, and of course, Larry White, he's our, our honorable councilman, city councilman, but also he is, um, you know, he was instrumental in the development of a father's place, which is a nonprofit organization in okay. Conway and, and was just recently recognized for his work, tremendous work, um, you know, and I, I formerly served on the board and, and totally believe in that program and everything that Wallace Evans and, uh, Jr. and his his staff are doing uh, with that initiative. But, you know, Larry's lending some great advice from the standpoint of someone who had to build up a nonprofit. Uh, you know, you need to partner with somebody. And, and he agrees grants aren't easy to get. Uh, this is a new day. And, you know, even along the way, when it comes down to, uh, you know, even nonprofit funds that were out there, there were you know, people who kind of made it bad for, for other people when they didn't do what they were supposed to do with yeah. the monies and Absolutely. things like that. So, so many dynamics have come into play. And that's why it's important for people to do their research uh, to figure out uh, how they need to prepare to present a proposal for something or a request uh, for money or funding. Uh, and they, they, they've got to have the data. They've got to have the plan. They've got to have everything buttoned up before they actually sit in front of someone and and uh, with the expectation that money will be handed to them. So, um, you know, going back to the marketing, yeah, going back to the marketing and promotion side, you know, one thing that I've, um, you know, always tried to uh, instill in people is that you have to market your business. Uh, first of all, who's going to know you're there if you don't market it? And I think that a lot of people uh, believe that social media is the end all and be all of marketing and, and you know, I understand that, yes, this is probably the most viral platform that you could use. However, you, you should not uh, take for granted uh, grassroots, um, even, you know, customer service could be a part of your marketing because word of mouth can kill a business. OK, uh, yeah. but, um, you know, you've got to also set aside funds for marketing and promotions and advertising, no matter uh, how small it is, everybody has a budget and somebody's going to work with that budget to get that money, uh, you know, on their goal sheet. So, <laughs> so you know, the 40% 40, the 40 that you talked about, uh, you know, earlier, uh, will people who are taking advantage of the PPP be able to, uh, I guess, um, use that as a, even a line item for how they're using that money? Is it allowable to, to use that within their 40%? Are you talking about for marketing? For marketing, yes. No, no. So not for marketing. So it, okay. it is. It so is that's, uh, I wanted you to make that clear for people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's going to be for rent, um, for uh, interest on debts at the bank. Uh, there's there's a few other things that they're looking at adding on to that for this second round. Mm -hmm. But I, I do not believe I heard anything about marketing. I wouldn't expect marketing to be on there. I think it's more geared around operations. Operations. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and not on that side of being able to gain and retain uh, mm -hmm. more customers. Yeah. I think that's important for people to know because, uh, you know, you want folks to really understand, uh, you know, how they're expected to use the money and what's going to be legal in terms of what they can do uh, with the funds that they receive. So, uh, you know, Keith Skinner adds once again, uh, business tax laws and payment knowledge is very important. Lee, I know you'll co-sign on oh, yeah. that. <laughs> exactly. And uh, Quanta Frazier, thank you for watching. She says, yes, you have to market. That is true. Uh, Larry is chiming in again. Uh, he concurs with the fact that we need a bookkeeper. Yes, you, you got to have good bookkeeping. Uh, you know, uh, we need to cultivate good bookkeepers, CPAs, especially in the black community. I, I, you know, there are very few uh, in the black community, not to say that you can't get someone else, but I'm just talking uh, you know, in terms of thinking about what a career path could be or even a business venture, if you are inclined that way, uh, you know, look into that as, as a possibility, because uh, there there are a few minority, uh, to, to my knowledge, at least in, in our community, uh, minority bookkeepers and CPAs. And so that's definitely an area that we can fill. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, this has been great. I really have appreciated uh, you being here today. And um, 
before I actually wrap up for the evening, I'm going to play a couple of commercials and then uh, we'll, you know, uh, come right back and uh, maybe take about five more minutes to wrap it up. Do you mind? Absolutely. No problem at all. All right. OK, mm -hmm. so everybody just sit tight. Stay tuned, please. Your child deserves the best in life. Growth through learning and positive moments. Caring through love, nurturing, and support. Security in a clean, safe environment. Your child deserves your neighborhood, child care, and development center. 1100 Creel Street, Conway, South Carolina. ABC certified and USAB approved. Call 843-248-0560 or 843-248-3584 for enrollment information. Your Neighborhood Child Care and Development Center is open 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, enrolling children ages 6 weeks to 12 years old, serving Conway and all surrounding communities, offering after-school care with a professional, ethically diverse staff. Your Neighborhood Child Care and Development Center. Call today. If you want to support Black-owned and operated businesses in the Grand Strand area and beyond, Check out the networkconnects.com for a complete list of establishments in our local area. Our network connects black businesses to community for a wide range of services, products, organizations, and resources that are viable in the African-American community. You'll find a wide range of products and services that'll fit your needs along with information about events and happenings around the local community. Check out the networkconnects.com. Connecting black businesses to community. The networkconnects.com. All right, and we're back. And again, thank you so much, Lee Belcher, for joining me today. I really do appreciate you being. Uh, my, my sidecar rider. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you for having yeah, me. Well. Absolutely. Always coming on and talking, so I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. You fill that spot well. And uh, Dr. Mack, of course, sends his best to you. Uh, and uh, please know that we will be putting you to work throughout Absolutely. the year. Uh, anytime you want to come on the show, want to bring on special guests or whatever, you just let me know. And uh, we would love to have you. There's some other things that I'm working on, and I'm sure that uh, your expertise will be needed in those areas uh, in, in, in the form of, you know, educating people. So I really do appreciate that. And I just want to remind everybody that uh, once again, uh, this is the Network Live. We're on every Friday at 4 p.m. Uh, typically, we have Dr. Winston D. McIver Jr. of Waccamaw Primary with his COVID-19 updates. He will be back next week. And we can talk COVID, and I'm sure we're going to end up talking about a few other things uh, uh, when he comes back. But, uh, you know, this week we wanted to dedicate to uh, letting everyone know what they need to do to get ready for this next PPP rollout. Uh, also, once again, I wanted to uh, want to remind you that uh, we do have some MLK Day celebrations coming up. Uh, of course, we have the 41st annual MLK virtual celebration hosted by the Conway Ory County MLK Planning Committee. It's going to be January 16th and 19th. And uh, each of those events starts at noon on each day. Uh, again, the event for the youth will be a Zoom and they will have to register. They can go to the Whittemore Community Magazine's website uh, to register for that. And I will put that information in the comments. And then on that Monday, we're going to have South Carolina State Representative Wendy Brawley, who's going to deliver our keynote address for MLK Day. And uh, so I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. I especially would like to thank the Emanuel and I Memorial Foundation for being a, a live stream destination in Charleston, South Carolina. We do appreciate your partnership. And if anyone is interested in more information about uh, including their Black business on the networkconnects.com, 
please visit the networkconnects.com. Also, if you will, please visit our YouTube page and subscribe to the Network Connects Live. I really want to see that subscriber count go up. And, uh, you know, now that we've had time to kind of settle down and regroup, um, you know, I'm going to focus a lot on making sure that we push for more subscribers and more followers for all of this great information that we bring to you every single week. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Lee. Thank My you. best to, to your wife and your family. Yes, and uh, we you. hope, yes, and we hope that everyone has a wonderful weekend. Let me check. Uh, oh, Wendy Bradshaw Willis, my girl out of New York. Hey, Wendy, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, yes, have a great weekend. We really do appreciate having you uh, tuning with us every single week. Uh, so as you can see, Lee, we, we aren't just Ori County. We're beyond these borders. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, thank you, everyone. God bless and have a safe and wonderful weekend. Remember, mask up, wash your hands, social distancing uh, at all costs. Be cautious. Be careful. COVID is still very real. All right. So thank you. Take care. Thank you.